Right, let's have a quick little recap of SIRDS. This should be completely revision from last year, but you must make sure you've got your head around SIRDS. You use them a lot during the rest of this course, so make sure you're really comfortable manipulating them, working with them, simplifying and all of that. Okay, so have, let's have a little recap of the rules. So first of all, if you've got the square root of A times B, that's the same as if you separate them and do the square root of A times the square root of B. The same for division. And we use SIRDS to keep our working and answers more accurate. Okay, let's have a look at some examples. So, the square root of 32 times the square root of 8. That's the same as if we do the square root of 32 times 8, which is the square root of 256, and that is 16. Now, one important thing I should have said when I was looking at the rules, these don't work with adding and subtracting the same as they do timesing and dividing. Timesing and dividing is nice and easy, you can simplify those, you can't do things in the same way you would with adding and subtracting. We'll have a look at something like that a bit later. Okay, simplify the following. The square root of 50. So we're looking for a factor of 50 that is also a square number so that we can make this a little easier and that's 25. So 50 is the same as 25 times 2. The reason I've picked 25 is because you can square root it and that gives us, if we separate them, that'd be the square root of 25 times the square root of 2 which will be 5 root 2. Okay, now here's one with an addition in. Now we can't do that being equal to the square root of 50 plus 18. That does not work, don't ever do that. But we can simplify each one and see what happens. So 50 is 25 times 2, 18 is 9 times 2. Again, we're picking square numbers in there so that we can take those out of the square root sign. We get 5 root 2 plus 3 root 2, which we can add together because we're adding like terms. We're counting up how many root 2s we have, so that would be 8. Okay, let's simplify this one. Now here we have a third on the bottom. If we're asked to simplify that, it means get rid of the third on the bottom. Or in other words, rationalize the denominator. We do that by multiplying through by root two over root two. That's just the same as one. So we're just going to follow that through now. Root two times root two is two. And then simplify that. We get two root two, no thirds on the bottom. Okay, next one is to simplify this one. Now we don't have to multiply by the whole of that two root three on the bottom. We can just do it, multiply by the root three because that's the only part we need to get rid of. Okay, so multiplying that through on the top, we get three root six, combining the, that root two and the root three into a root six. And on the bottom, root three times root three is three, times it by the two is six. Simplify that and we end up with root 6 over 2. Okay, next one, we have this. We've got to rationalise that denominator. Remember, we do it by multiplying through by the opposite of it. So instead of 1 minus root 2, we do 1 plus root 2. That means that when we times it out, we've got a difference of squares happening and we'll eliminate the root 2s on the bottom. So timesing through the top, we get 2 root 3 and 2 root 6. And on the bottom, we will be multiplying those two together. Now if we expand that bracket on the bottom, we end up with 1 minus 2. And we simplify that 3, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, so divide all of the top through by minus 1 and we get negative 2 root 3 minus 2 root 6.